there are only a few clauses remaining in the return to work agreement that once concluded and the three documents are signed, there will be no hurdle for the doctors to return to work. Mimi na wauliza murudi kazi, ukikosa kurudi kazi, ni nyumbani mutaenda na tutatafuta matakitari wadi. They must take responsibility for what they have done to this country for three months. Musimama ubandiliki. Government tightens the noose around doctor's neck even as doctors ask for deal. Tuko tayari na tumeona kwamba kuna sehemu zingine uh, kama kwa kimombo naweza sema kuwa strategic. Opposition coalition NASA shaking as joint nominations proposal causes ripples. I think you should set a step aside. Peace prevails so that it can be shown whether he's part of it, part of the problem, or part of the solution. Also, resign of a Baringo insecurity. Senator Gideon Moy tells Tiati MP Asman Kamama. The finding of the court is that the prosecution has not tendered compelling reasons to deny the respondent his constitutional right. This is a purely intimidation. And like keep your MP Lempur Kel charged and freed on bail over attacks on ranches. Good evening and welcome to KTN Prime on this International Women's Day. A happy one to all the women watching us tonight from me and the entire KTN News family. We're glad you could join us. My name is Sophia Wanuna. Our sign language interpreter tonight is William Silla. Now, our top story, go back to work first before we can have any further negotiations. That was the almost unanimous response by Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and the Council of Governors Chairman Peter Munya to striking doctors. The two spoke just moments after several medical associations officials spoke in reaction to the government's withdrawal of all offers in the mediation talks. And as Rita Tinina now reports, action against striking doctors began today with the Kenyatta National Hospital sacking 12 of its 60 doctors. After a shocker from the government on Tuesday, it was back to the drawing board for the Kenya Medical Practitioners, Pharmacists and Dentist Union officials. They held a day-long meeting with officials of the Kenya Medical Association. After three months of grandstanding, their tone changed to a rather submissive one. Tunaomba ya kwamba, serikali irudi wakae na muungano wa madaktari mara moja ya mwisho ili kumalizia ule mkataba ambao utakubalia uh, madaktari kurudi kazini but not even the reconciliatory tone would prompt a change of heart from the two levels of government usifike kiwango tupigane mimi nawauliza murudi kazi ukikosa kurudi kazi ni nyumbani mtaenda na tutatafuta madaktari wengine wewe umepewa nyongeza ile serikali inaweza kulipa the president and the council of governors on Tuesday, among other things, withdrew a 14.5 billion shilling offer made to the doctors and pulled out of the negotiations. There is a lot of goodwill and the union have declared fully com that they are full commitment to the process. Lakini atuwezi kuamini watu ambao mukiongea hii, mukisema hii leo, kesho wako mambo ingini. Hakuna goodwill, yu anakuambia goodwill wakuna. On Tuesday, the government ordered disciplinary action against doctors who do not return to work. And the country's biggest referral hospital, the Kenyatta National Hospital, took action. Twelve of our medical officers have been terminated or their duties have been terminated. The 12 doctors are among 60 who work at the hospital. But the government says it will go further than firing doctors. Plans are underway to start importing doctors. Hiyo hii sio wakati wa kwanza kufanya hivi. Kuna wakati mwingine wa Kenya mgomo kama hii ilikuja na wa madaktari wakaletwa kutoka nje. Kwa hivyo hii sio mambo ambayo hajawahi fanyika. Simefanywa hata kwa nchi zingine. And that is not all. Those who do not return to work will have to give up more than their workstations. Na yule ambaye hako katika nyumba ya serikali atahitajika aondoke. Yule ambaye pengine hako na gari ya serikali pia anaweza atahitajika na vifaa vyote vya serikali aweze kupeana. 
ndio serikali ianze kupanga vile tuweza kupata waundumu wengine the doctors appear to have eaten humble pie but with the government standing its ground and even threatening to import doctors the country is yet to see the end of the doctors versus government drama as thousands of kenyans continue to suffer rita tinina ktn news so plans are underway to import doctors. We want to hear from you tonight in our big queue. We are asking you whether you support that proposal from the national and county government to import doctors and replace the striking medics. Get in touch with us. You can tweet us at KTN News, at KTN Kenya. You can tweet me directly at Sophia Wanuna or send in a message on 22155. Now, Nanyuki Principal Magistrate Waititu Gichimu has released Laikipia North MP Matthew Lempurkel on a 200,000 shillings cash bill after the prosecution failed to give compelling reasons to continue detaining him in police custody. Lempurkel was arrested yesterday in Nairobi a day after a rancher was killed in Laikipia. The legislator has denied claims of inciting locals to invade ranches and instead accused the Ghibli administration of taking advantage of the lawlessness in Laikipia to target their opponents ahead of the August 8th general elections. The prosecution has not tendered compelling reasons to deny the respondent his constitutional right to be released on bond pending a trial or charges. What the court has said in effect, there is no evidence, no foundation for the charges which the police intended to bring against him. And we want to say that this habit of using the police or trying to go through the courts to settle political differences, to harass our members of parliament or our leadership in NASA, we highly condemn it. Let it be very clear to the Jubilee government. I am in ODM, I am in NASA. Whatever they want to do to me, I will stand for my people. Nobody is telling people to invade the ranches. Is we have a problem of the drought. Those who appear that Madhi was inciting people. Does it mean that Madhi was brought to a drought? Does it mean that Honorable Madhi was bringing global warming? Baringo Senator Gideon Moy today called on Tiati MP Asman Kamama to step aside as the chair of the Parliamentary Committee on Security. Gideon Moy says this will ensure Kamama does not compromise the ongoing security operation to flush out bandits in Baringo County. Now speaking in Bartabwa, Baringo North, Gideon Moy said that 100 million shillings set aside by the national government to compensate victims of cattle rustling was not enough to cater for the losses incurred by the locals. He hit out at the government for being adamant in arresting the culprits who caused mayhem in the region. His sentiments were echoed by Barista Ward Representative Joseph Makila. Uh, duties, even his duties of uh, oversight, and I concur with them that he should step aside. Uh, and it's because it's brought a lot of issues of conflict and conflict of interest. So for, for the... For, for justice to be seen to be done, and even for his own uh, sake, I think he should set, set a step aside, peace prevails, so that it can be shown whether he's part of it, part of the problem, or part of the solution. Hakawa msungu moja, lakini serikali ameshika pokot miya tatu sapin na tisa. Iko pale naitwa rumuruti, pokot 379 na wekwa ndane, msungu moja alikuba. Cheleke na alikuba, na wadimu alikuba, na wananji alikuba, hakuna mutu alishikwa, hata moja. As leaders, we want to leave the security services to go ahead uh, with their job in hunting down the criminals. Uh, who are perpetuating insecurity uh, in this uh, country. 
It may have challenges, but Africa is not a failed continent. This was the UN Secretary General's message during his maiden visit here in Kenya. The UN boss, Antonio Guterres, spoke during a joint press conference with President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House in Nairobi. KTN News reporter Mark Namaswa tells us more. Antonio Manuel Guterres, the ninth UN Secretary General, is in Kenya. Addressing the press at State House in Nairobi, the UN boss appeared to debunk the hopeless narrative morning, painted about Africa. I believe the, the narrative of the UN about Africa has not always been the right one. Sometimes it's too much concentrated on crisis. His visit, straight from a struggling Somalia, also landed him in the heat of issues facing Kenya, President Uhuru Kenyatta admitting Kenyans need help in the face of ongoing drought. The UN, together with the Red Cross and other partners, are working hand in hand to respond to the drought situation, and we truly appreciate all the assistance and support that you have been able to give us. As the world today marked the International Women's Day, the gender agenda featured in the talks. Women of Kenya are actively engaged in development is actually helping us achieve both growth, sustainable development, and greater equity. The protection of women in these circumstances is absolutely essential. But I believe that the only way to make that protection effective is to give full priority to the empowerment of women. Kenya's strategic position as a beacon of peace in a region riddled with strife was also discussed as an avenue of bringing peace and stability to the Horn of Africa and the Great Lakes region. In this case, the Somali, Democratic Republic of Congo and South Sudan crisis, with Kenya often having to shoulder the burden of playing host to refugees, like in the Radab refugee case and renewed hope for Somalia. With the new leadership that was elected, uh, with the, uh, the improved security situation in the country, even if a lot of challenges still remain, this is the moment for the international community to massively invest in Somalia. Guterres also paid a visit to Madhari slums in Nairobi, where he said he learned something about the challenges facing women and encouraged female aspirants not to drop their ambitions. In all aspects that can be copied not only in the African continent but around the world, proving that in today's uh, international community there are countries that are moving in order to make sure that the three pillars of the UN activity can be fully met. Guterres also visited the UN complex in Gigiri and is expected to head to the Dadaab refugee camp that is facing closure and which is home to some 400,000 refugees. Mark Namaswa, KTN News.